of course, once the movie came out, that was another wave. It got to the point where literally I was getting like death threats and I was getting videos of me green screened where they were like throwing stuff at my face. I got my TikTok account banned like six times in one day. They were mad because I was playing America. They didn't think I was Latina enough. There is also just the fact that I was playing, you know, a girl who is into girls. And they got so mad to the fact that they were sending me death threats and sending me like evil messages. It got so scary to the point where I was filming a video outside with one of the Doctor Strange posters in the back and I was like, I'm back. And as I was rewatching the video, like a car backfired. The sound of that like freaked me out. I like shut down. And it was just like at that peak of all these death threats and all these things and all these articles and all these people were saying all this stuff. I never think that it gets to me, but at that one point it had like freaked me out. Hello, you little lemon drops, and welcome to 2024. Woo! Happy New Year! Not only 2024, what? but officially oh. the first episode of season two. Season two, season two. Two, two, two. I would just like to get out of the way immediately. I am recovering from a cold, so if you think I sound congested, you would be correct. I am um, feeling much better, but I can hear it in my... I can hear it in myself right it's now. It's just cold. You had the flu. Yeah, it was pretty nasty. Yeah, had some fevers going on. Yeah, it was really, honestly, it was the sickest I've been in a long time. Yeah. But it it was going around. Yeah. Half of the people we know had yeah. it felt like, maybe, maybe more. Yeah. It's a rough one. So I hope everyone stayed healthy over the holidays and New Year. Hope um, you had a great time and... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on the ups, but man, are we excited for this. We took some time off, not really some time, maybe like a couple weeks. Taylor forgot where he sat. It's true. In the room. Yep. He tried to We went to film here. and I was going there and she was like, where are you going? And I go, oh, when it's just solo eps, I go there. She's like, no, you go here. I was like, you are totally right. That is embarrassing. So funny. Yeah. It's okay. A little rusty, so forgive us. But well, oh, I just cracked my neck. I really hope the mic picked it up. Oh, I it's didn't like hear rusty it. Rusty neck. Oh, dang it. Okay, never mind. I just heard it because it was my own neck. Huh. Um. Anyways, season two, we've got some fun stuff for you guys. Um, something that we decided to change up a little bit, kind of spruce up, was our lemon eleven segment. It is now lemon seven. And we added some fun questions into there. Yeah. Some of them will be the same. Some of them have changed. And you will you'll see our first lemon seven uh, during today's episode. Who who do we have on today's Speaking episode? Speaking of today's episode, we got a fun one to kick off the year in season two. Yes. Because we have <clears throat> I mean, most currently Mm-hmm. Dancing with the Stars champion, yes, but also very talented actress and hilarious human being, yeah, Zochi Gomez. I wanted to like text her after and be like, "When can we hang out? Can we hang?" But oh. like, I didn't want to like come off too strong, right? Yeah, yeah. I need to like, so Zochi, if you're listening, yeah, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. we, we didn't want. You were all right. We just had, we truly just had the best time with her. Like I left and I feel like my cheeks hurt. Like we like laughed a lot and she's just, she, she was so fun to have on. But I had, I had run into her like maybe a Mm. week prior to our taping um, at an event. And she, I like, I saw her across the way and I was like, oh, so she's here. Like she's coming on the podcast next week, but we had never met. And then. I'm talking to some friends and all of a sudden like I get a tap on my shoulder and I turn around and she's like jumps in front of me. She's like, I'm coming on your podcast next week. And like was just like so excited and sweet. And I was like, oh, my gosh, yes, you are. So And we hugged and it was I felt like I had like known her forever, but she's just so like full of life. Yeah. And bubbly. It's like very contagious. No, she's a ball of fun and just, yeah, so easy to talk to. You just want to be around her. Yeah. She's like, awesome. Just why I wanted to continue hanging out with her. Yeah. So so we'll see. But and she's crushing it right now. Yeah. Wow. I mean, if you're a Marvel fan, um, she plays America Chavez. America Chavez. Yes. 
Um, and if you're a Dancing with the Stars fan, then you certainly know who she is because she can dance. Yes, she can. And we talk all about it. Yeah. So what do we think? I think we should um, we should probably start the episode. Okay. But also, if you're new here before we start, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Please. And follow us along on this journey. Yes. So that you guys don't miss an episode because we've got some uh, fun surprises up our sleeve. Big season two. Okay, let's roll the tape. All right, see you on the other side. Sochi, Hi. welcome to the squeeze. <laughs> We I'm are so happy to be here. Oh my gosh, we are so honored to have you. I've watched a few of these. Though. You have? Yes. I have. <gasps> wow, that is that makes me excited. <laughs> I hope that gains me extra points. <laughs> it does. It does. It's making me blush. I don't think we've ever had anybody start by saying that. That's Maybe, sweet. But that now I'm now I'm now I'm blushing. <laughs> this this season we haven't had anyone. That that is a fact, because people, this is the first episode of season two. And we are starting big. The bar big is high <laughs> for this year. Um, first of all, congratulations on winning Dancing with the Stars. Thank we will, you. We will get into that plenty later. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that under the table for now. Um, before we start, we well we start each episode with uh, a game called Citrus Got Real. Mm-hmm. And in this jar of lemons, there are random questions. And if you've watched before, you know what kind of questions they are. Okay, I'm excited. Let's see here. Here's your drum roll. I like don't want to be the one at the top because like okay, basic. <laughs> <laughs> we need like a reload. I know. We got like our printer there. ran on ink. Oh. So, okay. <laughs> it's not reloaded. <laughs> That's so real. Okay. Need production budget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, if you were a kitchen utensil, what would you be? Ooh. Hmm. I would be, oh, I don't know what it like, does. I don't know what it. <laughs> you, can, you can picture it, though? Yes. Okay. So it looks like that at the top. Uh-huh. And people use it to, like, scoop. Like, oh. Um, like, put on, like, cake. Like the baking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, like yeah. the one with the, wait. Oh, what is that called? With like the rubbery know. top. Yeah, the, yes, rubbery, the rubbery top, top. And you spread icing you on spread a cake. spread icing. You scoop the thing. What is that So called? that it's like cleaned out. You this know? is embarrassing. I don't know spatula? what that's called. Is it called? It's, it's not called not a spatula. A, no. Is it a type of spatula? No. Rubbermaid. Oh, what but I'd be her because she's cute and she's useful. What? Okay. <laughs> I'm pulling her up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What is it called? A Rubbermaid commercial high heat resist silicone heavy. Oh, it is a spatula. <laughs> Wait, oh a spatula slash food scraper. <laughs> is that right? Re- <laughs> Those are not. Anyways, cold. maybe not that one because that's not a cute name. There's <laughs> no way. Okay, so you're a food scraper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Great choice. <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh. I don't even know what I would be. I would be a whisk because I well, love. Well, I, th- I was gonna say that, yeah. but then I was like, "That's too easy." <laughs> Why are you being a whisk? And I like mixing things together. <laughs> it's more like stirring the pot. Yeah, I do like stirring. You should the be pot. a ladle. <laughs> why? Why would I be a ladle? Because like that's a bit. That's like for a big pot. What's like a? What's an <laughs> overly dramatic kitchen utensil? Uh, like every time you like, I'm a blender. It's like <laughs> unnecessary loud. N- unnecessary. Wow, talking is difficult. <laughs> Frick. Um, what about know. like those measuring cups? Oh yeah, I'd be the ones that like there's like four hundred in one, and they're all connected, so you can't get rid of me. Yeah, yeah. It's like, jeez, I gotta, loop. I gotta pull this thing out. Like, I gotta. Yeah. Like, oh my god. I know. You got anything? Why was my first initial reaction to say a cutting board? Maybe that oh. was the last thing I cleaned. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Because they're um, sturdy and dependable. Okay. Oh. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That was. That was solid. It was deep. Better than <laughs> better than a food scraper, honestly. <laughs> I like food scraper. I'm kind of sad about that. I There's no I way it's so called good. a food scraper. I thought I had a cuter name. Yeah, well, it, um, that's not right. Food. We'll think of one. We'll think of one. Um, okay, but as we said, you are our first guest of season two, which is very, very fun for us, kicking off the new year with a fun guest. Um, but you're also our youngest guest that we've had on. And oh, wow. I did want to ask if this is going to backfire if you say yes because i just said that you're the youngest but i imagine that like most things that you do you are like the, the youngest. youngest does yeah. does it ever like bother you if people are like talk about like you being young 
or ask you how you feel about being the youngest. Like I used to get that a lot. I yeah, I no, get I'm that old. a lot. <laughs> but when I was young, I used to get it. I promise, I was young at one point, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, I don't get too bothered by it. It gets a bit repetitive, especially when I'm like, you know, in interviews, and they're like, "You're the youngest one. You're the youngest one." It's like back to back interviews where I'm like, "Okay, I get it. <laughs> I'm young." You're on a press yeah. junket. Yeah. Right. Um. But uh, at the same time, I kind of like being the youngest. There's something so great about it, just because I don't know. I feel like at especially after being on Dancing with the Stars where I was the youngest one there. Um, it almost felt like I was like the younger sister to everybody. Yeah. And that's like a good feeling. Yeah. I like that feeling. I like being like the one that gets the hugs and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but sometimes it can get a bit sad, you know, because like working on Doctor Strange, I was the only kid. I was the youngest one. Yeah. And I was there for like seven months and it was in the middle of the pandemic. And oh, well. I was like guys i'm so sad right now yeah i'm like so lonely yeah. you know and i had luckily i had like a really great relationship with my hair and makeup people but mainly mm-hmm. because they were the only people in my circle yeah you know especially in the pandemic like no one could be in like it was everyone's right. everyone had different bubbles you know so you know at different times it means different different things yeah. yeah but i think right now you know being the youngest is like a nice yeah nice thing and i think it's also because you know, next year it's like, then you're 18. I'm gonna be 18. Yeah. And that sunk in. What was it like a couple of days ago? I was sitting in the car and I was like, looking out the window. I was like, it's <sighs> like only a couple more months of being 17. You're getting up there. Ugh, that's how I feel about being 26. I, I, I said 26. <laughs> like how I'm 26 now, but I've I thought like, you're 27. Oh, I'm turning 27. Oh, whoops. What? Oh, my- <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah like you realize you're 10 years older than sochi and she was like picture this <laughs> val's 20 years older than me 20 years. what year are you born uh 2006 okay so then i'm only nine okay you're nine. <laughs> that's why i was thinking you were 27 wait because is that yeah yeah i'm 97 yeah in 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 february you will be 10 years older wait yeah what okay i was thinking is it actually the other one what never mind i was trying to do math, <laughs> math is it not mathing right now yeah, in February you will be ten. Oh years yeah, old. yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, February. In, oh, sorry, that's my birthday. What the <laughs> heck? When's your birthday, March? I'm. You are the one that gets ages and numbers wrong. I that's know me. what is happening. I'm is nervous. So I'm in front of a Dancing with the Stars winner. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he did remind me of that because I'm having like this weird thing about turning 27. I think because I feel like yeah, I lost like. 20 like 22 ish 23 24 25 i oh, lost that really like during pandemic ish years that just went quick yeah I, yeah it just I, I blinked and i'm like oh my gosh I'm gonna now you're be- in your upper 20s huh? uh, not yet i got a couple months okay. <laughs> couple but yeah, months. yeah being being young i feel like has its pros and cons yeah i definitely can relate to the lonely thing like when we were filming the franchise for years i was always the youngest mm. always like you know, people would be going out and doing their own things and have those yeah. clicks. And uh, then they come back and they talk about it. And you're like, yeah, I was like, where, where was my invite? Got you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. Um, something fun that you two have in common, I believe, is you're both OG Southern Californians, which I feel is Yo. like rare. Everybody here is from I, somewhere. That's also yeah. I get that a lot. It's like I people ask me like, "Where are you from? Where are you, where are you coming from?" I'm like, yeah. guys, I live here. here. Yeah, I literally. Live. That's one thing that took. <laughs> <sighs> there was a time. There was a time in my lifetime <laughs> that people thought I was Canadian. Why? Because I did a show in Canada. Okay. Um, and I had like posted a picture. And it was me holding like a Canadian flag, like four Canadian flags and like a hat and like a little thing. And I was like, guess where I'm at? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It was like some corny thing. And I was like, guess where I'm at? And like felt like it was supposed to be me teasing like that I was filming. Yeah. Bro, some random like magazine, like, I don't know, person writing up an article. Up that you're um, from Canada? Set, wrote that I was from Canada and that oh. I was born in Canada. And thing is, is that this person was all in like all the way in Spain writing this article 
And thing is, it got stuck on Wikipedia. Oh, no. Yes. And it got, it stayed there forever. And my mom was like, we need to get rid of that. Like, I want to get rid of that. Like, like you know, and it took months to oh. get rid of wow. the fact that I was from Canada. Yeah. No. So now I'm like, so like I used to be before I used to be like, yeah, I'm from here. Yeah. Like I grew up here. I'm now I'm like, yeah, I'm from here. And I grew up in Echo Park. <laughs> like I like try my best to like put that everywhere. Cause so funny. like guys, I'm not Canadian. There's nothing wrong with being Canadian. No. Either. Like I'd love yeah. to be Canadian. They're very nice. But yeah. you're not, but Canadian. you're not Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so you're I'm not like, I filmed a show in London. Can I be British? Does that make Ooh, me British? If you no. can do an accent. Well, yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> He's like, no. no. Okay, so you grew up here. I'm curious because I think we probably like started in the industry around the same age. Like, how yeah. old were you, and what did that look f- like for you getting into acting? Wow, yeah. Um, so it started with my mom was in the industry because she did set decorating on oh, like sweet. commercials and like that kind of stuff. Okay. And um, she would always bring me with her to like prop houses and all that kind of stuff. And I just really liked being there and being a part of it. Yeah. Um, but of course at an age you start getting like more bubbly and like yeah. your mom is like, what am I going to do with you? I can't bring you to work. Yeah. <laughs> and so she put me uh, in musical theater and awesome. I did that from five to 12. Okay. And I did like 22 full length musicals. Wow. Well, it was my favorite thing on the planet. Like, I am a musical theater kid and I kind of like love it so so much. Um, But yeah, that's how that started. And it wasn't until like 10, I started getting like bigger roles in, you know, the plays and stuff. And I was like, I kind of like this, you know? And so when my mom was working, I asked her like, I kind of want to get into this. How do I like do that? And so I started out with a commercial and then, Things got a little harder just because, you know, kids who started out younger got roles Mm -hmm. because they had more of a resume. Yeah. And so it was harder for me because I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter if I can be the silliest one and the funniest one in the room. The other kid's going to get the commercial because they've already done like four or five other commercials. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my mom put me in uh, like, what is it called? Student films. Um that like college students were doing and stuff like that. And so I did a lot of student films for USC and like Chapman and stuff. And that's where I gained a lot of my experience. I did a lot of stuff. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Yeah. That you could do that. Yeah. I became like, I became the kid for student films. Like there was a point where I was like on a like streak. You were the Meryl Streep of basically. Yeah. (laughs) Love that. Basically. (laughs) Of student films. I like to, I like to call myself that. (laughs) But that, that was a period in my time where I was like, I'd done like four or five of them back to back. Okay. And I, it was like lead roles too. Yeah. And, um, that's kind of where I gained all my experience and really just like, understood what it was that's where I gained a lot of my like respect and a lot of my you know how I should behave on set and like what other people were doing and what their jobs were yeah because you know student film kids like they're like more willing to be nice to you you know and like let you in yeah and um probably a great way to start it was it was a great way because also they're like happy to have someone who's happy on set you know yeah And that was me. I was like very much very happy to be there. Um, And then I got like a few roles on like TV shows and stuff like that that were like guest guest stars and stuff. And then I got Babysitter's Club at like 13. Okay. And that was like a full season of in Canada for three months. Um, And that's why you're Canadian. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and then the pandemic hit. And so then we did like a bunch of our stuff during the pandemic, like a lot of like our show released during the pandemic, which was weird and hard. Oh, wow. mm. um, and then I got Doctor Strange after that. If you're like me and trying to eat a little healthier in 2024, Hungry Root is here to rescue you from those short lived resolutions by making meal planning easy and nutritious. Hunger Root is the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality food delivered straight to your door. They've got healthy groceries and simple recipes all in one place. All you do is take a fun short quiz and Hungry Root will get to know you, your goals, and how you like to eat. 
They'll ask what flavors you like, which kitchen appliances you use, and more. From there, they'll keep your needs and preferences at top of mind and start building your cart with delicious recipes and all your grocery needs for the week. Hunger Root supports all major diet needs and lifestyles, including gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, dairy-free, low-carb, and many, many more. Right now, Hungry Root is offering the Squeeze listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Yes, for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash the squeeze to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash the squeeze. Don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. Who knew that a better pillowcase is all you need for a better night's sleep? Let's talk about how we can incorporate self-care while we sleep. Taylor and I have incorporated Blissey's award-winning 100% Mulberry Silk pillowcases into our nighttime routine. And by nighttime routine, I mean our sleep routine. I love it because silk is amazing for your hair and skin. It reduces frizz, tangles, and prevents breakage. That's because it keeps the moisture in your hair and it keeps your skincare products and natural moisture of your skin on your skin while cotton pillowcases literally absorb it off of your face. Taylor loves the silk pillowcases because they help keep him cool throughout the night. He doesn't toss and turn anymore. It keeps him from feeling sweaty, waking up all gross in the middle of the night. So it's really a win-win for both of us. We've really upped our sleep game. And Blissey has pillowcases, sizes, styles for everyone. Women love them. Men love them. Kids love them. They have over 1 million raving fans, and you can be the next one. You can try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com slash squeeze and get an additional 30% off. That's blissy, B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash squeeze and use code squeeze to get an additional 30% off. Your skin, hair, and sweat will thank you later. What was that like audition process like for Dr. Strange? It was funny actually really yeah because That's not what i thought you were gonna say <laughs> <laughs> no well, i find a lot of things funny <laughs> so i had gotten an audition for it i don't know i'm a i'm gonna just say that i got an audition for it and i the sides were for someone who was like 17 18 my 13 year old booty was like uh this isn't i don't know how i'm gonna oh, get wow. this you know I, this is not 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 it for me here but i'll try and so I did my audition and then I sent it out and I didn't get anything back for a couple months. I was like, okay. Was it, it was just like a tape? Yeah, it was a tape. Okay. And I d- like sent like, cause for my tapes, I usually send like two different reads. So I do like one that's like one version and then yeah. another one that's like completely opposite. So I was like, yeah. within that, I'll have something, <laughs> like I'll get something back, right. you know? Um, but I did take in the fact that it was like originally for a 17, 18 year old character. And I was like, okay, I'm yeah. not that. So, um, yeah, I didn't hear anything for a couple months. And then, uh, a couple months later, like, I don't know, four or five months later, maybe wow. even more than that. Um, I got another audition for it and huh. I was like, Oh wait, but now she's like 14. <laughs> and I was like, I could do that. And so the scene was a little different, but same kind of thing. Oh, they read, they wrote her character younger. Yeah, they wrote her character younger, oh. and I was like, okay, I could possibly do this. And then I was looking at the sides, and then there was like words like sorcerer, and like there was like a joke about like Taco Bell Supremes and stuff like that. And I was like, I think, I think this is for Doctor Strange too. And so then I looked into it a bit more. And I was like, what character could this be? And so I like tried my hardest to find a character, like a character that would fit in this world. And um, because I was already a fan of Marvel. So I kind Mm. of like, yeah, picked up the puzzle pieces and I was like, oh, this is America Chavez. Like this could possibly be America Chavez. Wow. Mm. You put that together. Yeah. And so with kind of just the characteristics of America, I planted those into my scene you know, kind of did exactly what I did before in mm-hmm. the tape that I had sent, but ch- also chose different like elements that fit America a bit more. Yeah. So things that were a bit more like sassy, certain lines were said like a bit more like rough than I did originally. Yeah. And, um, and then I sent that and then I got told that I was like pinned. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 and so then I got a friend of mine who, did like stunt 
stuff, I worked with him because I was like, okay, if I'm pinned, there's a possible chance that I could go for like a, you know, audition, like yeah. in person and stuff. And they might like ask me how well I can do stunts and like all that. that. Yeah. Oh, wow. And thing is, I do martial arts. Did I was going to ask, did you before yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. I started doing martial arts when I was in babysitter's club. Like okay. right before that, I started doing martial arts. Wow. And my mom put me in that because she was like, you could possibly go out for like superhero stuff, like action films. Like, I want you to know what you're doing. And I was like, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to be in an action film. I'm, <laughs> do you see me? I'm not a superhero. <laughs> and I was just like, I like constantly like had negative feedback on it, which looking back at it now, I probably shouldn't have. Um, and I went, she kind of forced me at first. And then I like grew a great friendship with people there. Um, but yeah, I went to a stunt guy and we did some like boxing, we did some training and we did some of that for like a solid, like week and a half of just like intense training yeah. every single day. Wow. And, um, and that was great hmm. because then I got told that I was going to go to England for the like audition, like the, what is it called? The in-person audition, oh, okay. the final, the final the final one, the test audition. Was it just, do you know, was it just you at the time? or No, was there it? was a few other girls because okay. I saw them <laughs> on the plane. Oh, fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was so awkward. awkward. I'm going to tell you, that was like, well, that is one of the <laughs> au- most awkward things is when you see other people yeah. there. Yeah. And you're like not familiar with each other, but like your acquaintances because you constantly see each other at the yeah. same yeah, thing. Yeah, you're going like, the same thing. <laughs> Uh, good to see you yeah. good luck yeah <laughs> literally but the thing is you have to say good luck because you just don't know who it's gonna go to you know and you i at least i want to be really nice to each other because i'm yeah. like yeah i don't ever want to be on a person's bad side and i think it's always best to just say good luck yeah um but yeah i did my audition uh benedict was there we were oh, in really? the sanctum sanctorum i think is what it's called why am i forgetting how it's called but yeah but That's it was like a chemistry is. read. Yeah. It was a chemistry read. Okay. And I did my whole audition with a pizza slice. I like ate it and I like threw it down. And I remember for my second, we had like done the first go. And they were like, that was great. Could you do it like one more blah, blah, blah. They gave me an adjustment and I did that. And I remember I had like completely kind of messed up one of the lines. And I was like freaking out in my, in my inside. Like I was just like. <sighs> <laughs> and I was like, I already said that. And I, so I like <laughs> repeated my line and i was like made it like kind of benedict's problem i was like made i already said it problem. like <laughs> i already said that why are you making me repeat my stuff <laughs> fine i'll repeat it for you because you're slow and so i like did all this stuff and i like kind of like <laughs> improv it because i was like e, i messed this up so bad <laughs> find a way to like figure it out um and then i like it just went really well and um did you have to wait a while to hear after that? Well, then here's the thing, because after the audition, you have to do your stunt like evaluation. Oh. That's oh, what they, they called did it. Do, they did do. A yes, stunt thing. they did. Wow. And thing is, because it was all like scheduled, the girl before me ha- would was supposed to do her audition and I was in the trailer. And then when she goes to the stunt evaluation, I go into my audition. Mm. And by the time I was getting out of my audition, she was only just then getting out of her stunt evaluation. Mm. So I knew that she was probably in there. It was in there for like 30, 40 minutes. Uh-huh. Bro, I went in there and they was like, they were literally like, okay, can you like walk that way and walk back? And then I wanted to just see you do some jogging and like. That was it? That was it. They like made me like kick a thing at the very bottom. And I was like, I didn't get it. Right. That's where I literally. Goes. I literally sat down in the car on the way back and I was like, I don't think I got it. Yeah. Cause why wouldn't they ask? Cause why me wouldn't to... they like ask me to do like a whole evaluation? Why wouldn't they want to see me like do stuff? Yeah. yeah. If they didn't think that the, I was an actual option. Yeah. yeah. You know, I freaked out. Yeah. And the thing is, it was also the pandemic during that. So I had to, that was a other thing. I had to stay in a hotel room in London for a whole week you had to before, before, yeah, the before the audition. <gasps> wow. And so then I got back to my hotel I have to wait a couple more days and then I come back home Oof. and I'm all just like, oh, it's a great experience. You know, you got to be thankful. It's every, a learning the lesson. <laughs> I'll take it to the next one. Yeah. Oh. And then I get home and I'm also like, I don't know. I don't think I got it. My, my agent's like, okay, let's get on a zoom. I want to like talk to you about a few things. And then she pulls up the phone and Sarah Finn's on the phone and she goes, Hey, Sochi. And I was like, why is Sarah Finn on the phone? I was like, 
I swear if they tell me that I just got the role, I'm going to be so serious. Like, please. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah Finn was like, hey, Sochi, I just want to say thank you so much for auditioning. It was so much fun. And I was like, yeah, I did not get it. <laughs> and then she was like, yeah, I just want to say, you know, welcome to the Marvel family. You are America Chavez. Oh, wow. And I was like, I just got chills you saying that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, she was, like, super nice. Like, again, this is, like, on the phone, on a Zoom call. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, like, my voice, like, cracked. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it did not, like, settle into my brain for a couple of days. Because it was just like, what does this even mean? Yeah. You know? And then, of course, there's, like, the negotiations and all that that have to go on. And so even though... You get told on the phone, like, yeah, you know, you're America Chavez. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You the lawyers still got to work it out, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. at the time I was on Babysitter's Club and I was set to do the second season. Oh, mm. so to figure out timing and everything. Yeah. And I ended up not being able to do the second season of Babysitter's Club. And um, luckily it all worked out, but it was a really hard time for me just because my whole future was basically in the hands of a bunch of dudes in suits, you know? Yeah. And they're planning out what it's going to be like and my future with Marvel and my future with Netflix and all that. And it was just like, I was sitting there, I was like, I can't do anything. Yeah. You know, they're just going to figure it out, I guess. Yeah. That's crazy. Did you ever either like before filming or during filming feel an insane amount of pressure being like, uh, you know, I'm America Chavez in, you know, a multi hundred million dollar movie in acting opposite Benedict Cumberbatch. Like, was that ever terrifying to you or no, it was exciting. It was exciting. I mean, right. to me, I always feel like I shouldn't ever feel terrified if I already have all the things in place. Like for me, planning and knowing my stuff is the most important thing. And yeah. so like, I had notes upon notes about America. I had all this stuff. And the thing is, that was great for me, but it's, it was also like hard too because I have all my notes and how I picture America, you know? And sometimes that doesn't fit to yeah. like a different thing that gets written, you know, a script that we had originally gotten then gets rewritten. And there's a bunch of like script changes. And I'm like, okay, here's what I think America is and how I've pictured her just from the comics and then from the script and like yeah this is how I view her and then it doesn't match with the new script that was given you know so yeah. it was hard you know having to let go of the person that I had created especially in that you know test audition because that was how I pictured America was I was like that's who I think she is you know that's her soul that's her yeah. that's her spirit and yeah. so having to warp that and change that and have to go into the mindset of like, this character is not there yet. She will be, but in the future, you know, we have, we don't get to see that yet. And so yeah. working that was hard and just like weird. Yeah. And that was probably the one time that I felt pressure because yeah. then I realized, okay, this is my face, you know, yeah, on the screen and I'm having to like portray a character before she is the character that people know her to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cause people only saw America when she was like 18, you know, yeah. in the comics. Yeah. And so I was pay like portraying a 13 year old version of the person that they know yeah. and love. Yeah, that's true. That process is just like so crazy. Like I just love hearing all of it. Cause I've never done that in my life and <laughs> don't know the half of that. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like, it's so different from like, I feel like every time it's like so different and also like the things that people say, like them only like, like having you do like the kick or like the walk and you're like, I didn't get it. But then there's also times when you're like, Oh, I got it. Or then yeah, you like don't in hear. The, in the audition room, like I was like, Psh, guys, <laughs> I got this Yeah. <laughs> in the bag. Two seconds later, like very easily humbled. <laughs> no. I was like, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> It's the it's the worst audition processes. Like you just you never know. You never know. That's the thing. You truly never know. Because sometimes you have experiences where like you truly believe you knocked it out of the park, and you're yeah. like, "There's no way I'm not gonna get this." Yeah. And you don't. And yeah. then you have times where you go in and you read once, and they're like, "Thanks for coming," and you walk out, and they're like, "Okay, so they hated me." Yeah. And then you get a call, and they're like, "You got it." You're like, "What?" 
I, you just it's... don't know. It's almost like they want to mess with you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But Dang. it's chill. <laughs> it's chill. <laughs> it's chill. <laughs> um, making a jump from all the stuff that you've done and starting at an early age, you you also you you have a large presence online. Um, yeah. and that, you know, over the last few years and has gotten, for years to come is going to grow and grow, grow, and grow. Yeah. Um, I mean, it already has, but yeah. I, it's going to continue to, um, I know that you have dealt with, you know, like anybody with that kind of presence online, but you know, your fair share of negative comments and bullying, yeah. racism, what has, what has it been like for you dealing with like the the dark side of social media? Has it been tough? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, all that stuff is very tough and it's hard to see or read or like be in your mind and be like, how can someone write that? Know. You know, but at the same time, I have a very well established good relationship with, you know, my fans and stuff like that. So, yeah, but it was a hard road to get there. You yeah. know, at first when I did Babysitter's Club and it got announced that I was playing Dawn, which is a blonde white girl with what, like blue eyes in mm. the original books and in the comics. Mm. And it got announced that I was playing her. There was like enormous backlash. And mm. at that time, I didn't have an established fan base. Yeah. You know, mm. and that was really hard for me. That was probably one, one of the times that I was like, uh, uh, I don't like this, yeah. you know, and it didn't sit right with me, you know, especially seeing comments that were just like, that is not my Dawn. Yeah. She is like brunette, brown skin, brown eyes. This is not how I pictured my Dawn. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, guys, what? And it's just comment after comment. There's like nothing, no one defending me at all. And you're 13 at this time. I was right? 12. Okay. Jeez. Yeah, I hadn't turned 13 yet, actually. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was just a whack time for me. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do something for me because this sucks. And so I created an anonymous profile because guess what? That's what everybody else is doing. And <laughs> I created like three or four different like profiles with different names and different things. And I like wrote back to people and I was just like, guys, can we please just give it a chance for the show to come out and then we can like... Yeah. make our decision and i like wrote back like as a young latina mom actually <laughs> <laughs> i was like i think this is a great representation for my daughter <laughs> i love this like i just wrote like a bunch of things like that like Stop. in different people's perspectives and i put that out there because i'm like that's who will tell me later on yeah. when they stop me on the street yeah. it's going to be a mom saying how their daughter feels represented yeah, like, yeah. thank you yeah. Which they have, yeah, and I hear that. it all the time. Yeah. Mm. But at that moment, I didn't hear that at all. And yeah. so I was like, you know what? I'm going to write this in existence. <laughs> and I defend myself, and it just takes that. It literally just takes that because after a few, I wrote a few of those, a few people wrote back, and they're like, thank you for saying that, actually. Yeah. You know, uh, that changed my perspective. And, you mm. know, you're, you're right. I should just wait. And I was like, thank you. Like, I just needed that. Like, I just needed something, someone to say something to help me yeah because yeah. no one else was going to yeah i'm gonna write this into existence it's one of my favorite things <laughs> that is so good as a 12 year old i know two <laughs> yeah i like fully told my mom i'm like mama is it okay if i like create profiles <laughs> to like you know defend myself and she goes yes you can <laughs> and i literally sat there like with like i was so excited too i was like <gasps> This is how my night's going to go. <laughs> and it was my favorite thing. And I did it on like Twitter. I did it on Instagram. I did it on Facebook. I did it on everything. I love that you like admit to this because everyone does it, but no one says anything. <laughs> they do? I assume. <laughs> I assume there's I quite mean, a few people. I mean, not defending do themselves, but everybody like, yeah, makes, you know. Does something. Yeah. Some yeah. Oh, I'm whatever. sure there's people that. To defend themselves. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, hope I so. know of a couple in my head, but you know a couple <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to out them on this podcast. <laughs> LOL. Yeah. Do no, I, I admit it because it felt really great. Yeah. I never say my names that I created, so I could do it yeah. again. You still got those. <laughs> got them up your sleeve. Do you, has 
it gotten much better or do you still, you know, see stuff that? You know, well, the thing is, after that, once the show came out and it was all good and it was great, you know, but also with Doctor Strange, I was in the middle of the pandemic sitting in my room in England and the news broke out that I was cast, you uh-huh. know, and that was also something that I was not prepared for. I was just like, oh, it's happening today. Oh, mm-hmm. great. OK, yeah. here uh, it is. And um, that was hard, too. That was within itself really hard. Um, and of course, once the movie came out, that was another wave. And it got to the point where literally I was getting like death threats and I was getting like videos of me like green screened where they were like throwing stuff at my face. And I was like, what is going on? And it like I got my TikTok account like banned like six times in one day. It was crazy in what, one day. What are people mad about? They were mad about the fact that, well, they were also mad, number one, because I was playing America and it wasn't like they didn't think I was Latina enough and certain things like that. Or it was just like, OK, guys, and that my hair wasn't curly. I'm like, OK, I can curl it, guys. <laughs> and then there is also just the fact that I was playing, you know, a girl who is into girls mm-hmm. and her mom has, you know, a wife. And the thing is, it's like, guys, what? And they like talked, I don't know, for like a couple minutes. And like the two moms had a scene where they, I think she kissed her on the cheek. And so it got banned in a few, you know, Mm. places. And those people got so mad at me for the fact that they, that the movie wouldn't be able to come out where they lived. Hmm. And they got so mad to the fact that they were sending me death threats and sending me like, evil Uh messages and like it got so scary for me because i was like what i didn't do anything you know yeah yeah and um it got so scary to the point where i was literally like on the out i was like outside filming a video where i was like my account is back (laughs) after being banned for like the seventh time i was like it just became a joke because at that point i had fans you know i had grown a like a fan base and yeah um they're very supportive I'd like limited my comments. So only like they're still limited to the point that like only people that I follow back can comment um, mm. on TikTok, especially. Mm. Is it um, rough? It's rougher on TikTok. It was for a while. It was pretty scary. Mm. You know, I just I did not want to see anything. Yeah. And I thought that the only way that I could do that is if I just, you know, cut it down to the people that I allow. Yeah. yeah protect sure. yourself. Yeah. And so. Yeah, I was like filming a video outside during with like one of the Doctor Strange posters in the back. And I was like, I'm back. <laughs> and as I was rewatching the video, like a car backfired and like the sound of that, like freaked me out. I like literally like shut down. And it was just like at that peak of like all these death threats and all these things and all these articles and all these people were saying all this stuff. And at, to me, I never think that it gets to me. But at that one point, it mm-hmm. had like, you know, kind of freaked me out and it was like a one of those moments i was just like okay well that happened yeah yeah, yeah. gosh that's crazy but uh, now that i've experienced all that you know yeah to me anything else is like okay what are you gonna do yeah <laughs> you what, know? Else, what else you got bring it on yeah literally that's such a good like outlook to have yeah like already kind of like set up yeah like i've for I've, yourself like with so much life to come yeah. like that's that's really great that you yeah, just have it's that not, it's it's not going away like, yeah it's yeah. gonna be come back yeah. things are gonna happen you know and at least i've already experienced those things like i have those accounts that i did that you know i yeah. have my limited for a reason you know i have the block button easily accessed for a reason you yeah. know yeah and so i'm not like nervous about any of those things anymore like at first at a point it like reached a moment where I got scared, you know? Yeah. And thing is now I'm not like, eh. Yeah. You know, I see a comment and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like recently, like on Dancing with the Stars, I had like won the relay race or whatever in like week seven. I don't know. And uh, like there was a bunch of backlash, like, you know, she's just being, she's the favorite, you know? I'm like, guys, you're saying this this week. Next week, it ain't going to be this. So I'm going to just let this happen. And what's happened has happened. Yeah. I'm going to take that win. We good. (laughs) (laughs) 
and I just like don't even reply to anything because it's like they're just looking for something to say, you know? Yeah, just feed into it and they're get exactly what they want. Yeah, people behind a keyboard that are too scared to say it to your face. I was once that too. Except I wrote like really defensive great stuff. So <laughs> I feel like it's maybe okay if that's if that's the case, if you're like defending someone. Yeah. That's that's a lot. Yeah. Not just that being mean. Tearing, Those are nice comments. Tearing people down for no reason. Yeah. It's a new year and there are so many different kinds of resolutions, workout tips, plans. There's there's so many different things going into a new year and it could be a little scary. But if you have been interested in doing a juice cleanse, squeeze.com has you covered. Not only do they have you covered, but their juices taste so amazing. I am a huge fan of them. A lot of people don't know there are so many benefits to doing a juice cleanse. Obviously, the physical benefits of weight loss, it helps you be less bloated, clearer skin. But there's also benefits of increased energy, better sleep helps you break bad eating habits, but also fasting helps you build discipline and it also decreases the risk of disease. A juice cleanse can sound a little intimidating, but squeeze.com has your back. You can head to squeeze.com and use code the squeeze for same day local delivery or free fast delivery nationwide. That's code the squeeze at squeezed.com. Something that we kind of like connected with you and your team before Something that I actually have not like heard of prior to it and um, is AI porn, which is where yeah. like people's likeness is used in ways that are definitely not approved. Yeah. Um, and it's a massive topic that I've only just recently learned about that is definitely um, very destructive in people's lives and in mental health. And um we are so sorry that you have been a victim of that and directly yeah. affected by it. And no one should have to deal with that, but especially you being a minor still. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's something that is just doesn't sit right. Yeah, makes me weird. want to um, vomit in my mouth. Um, yeah. And it's just not acceptable. What, what was this like, what has this experience been for you? Like learning about it? Yeah, well, to me, I didn't really, well, funny enough, um, also not funny, but <laughs> like I got to <laughs> say funny, um, but I had like looked up on Twitter, like, because I don't own it, like I don't have an account really, Yeah. Um, but sometimes when I go to events, you know, I like dress up in a certain way and like people will write about it and like say how like they thought my outfit was, like that's yeah. what I care about. <laughs> yeah. And I looked on Twitter and one of those kind of videos popped up and I was like, what is this? Yeah. And it wasn't until then that like I'd realized that my mom had actually like, you know, had full battles, like told my agents and was like, we need to take this down, that kind of thing. So she'd known that this had been going around. She had known and yeah. I didn't, you know, which I thank her, yeah. you know, you got, yeah. you have to be very thankful to have a mom who yeah. is like so protective and so on it because I'd never seen any of those before. Yeah. Um, and when I asked her, I was like, what is this? Like, can we get this taken down? And she goes, I've tried, you know, I've tried so hard to get it down. Like she's had emails upon emails, but like there's been a lot and she's dealt with it all. And I don't, for me, it wasn't like something that was mind boggling, but just more like, like, why is it so hard to take down? Yeah. You know? And that was my, like, whole thought on it. was just, like, why is this allowed? Yeah. You know? And I just thought it was weird. And in my mind, I knew that it wasn't me. Yeah. So it didn't, like, mess with me or anything like that. But it was just, like, something that felt really uncomfortable uh, because I couldn't take it down. Yeah. Because yeah. you have no control over yeah. it. Yeah. Did it, even though you obviously know it's not you and AI is freaking terrifying. Yeah. Um, did it feel like an invasion of privacy? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. obviously it's not privacy. But, yeah. Because it's not you, but, but it's still. just an invasion of, you know, who you are and the fact that these 
people can do that with your face. face? Well, also, the people's face did not really look like me. <laughs> I think the only thing that like really resembled was like the eyebrows and like maybe the hair. Um, <laughs> so that's what I got to say on that. <laughs> but <laughs> um, She's like I got better eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I did see like I was just like, OK, you know, if someone was really weird and twisted, this would not be very good for me, you know. And it freaked me out about yeah. the fact that someone thinks that's cool, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it just, yeah, made me just weirded out and I didn't like it and I wanted it taken down. Yeah. yeah. And that was my main thought process was just like, down, take this down, please. Yeah. And it wasn't because I felt like it was invading my privacy, more just like it wasn't a good look for me, you yeah. know? This is nothing to do with me, and yeah. yet it's on here with my face, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. Has it been taken down? Taken I don't down? think so, actually. Interesting. Yeah, but I see a lot less of them. Yeah. It, they just haven't, because you can't take them down. Yeah. You know. Have Is there, like, I want to say, I don't want to say, how have you been able to cope with it, but I guess maybe for lack of a better word, cope, or is there, like, tools that you can put in place to like not have to see it. Like, have you like, can boundaries. you block it? Yeah. Boundaries have been put yeah. in place. Oh yeah. To... Well, thing is I like, just cause I have a free account, like I just take it away, you know? Yeah. But it's just weird to think that like, if someone looked up, you know, my name, that that's also what pops up too. Yeah. You know, but to me, I don't think about that, you know, cause there's no, Nothing good comes from thinking about it, you yeah. know? So to me, I just don't even give it light a day. Because if I do, then I know that my day is going to be, like, weirded out, and I'm just going to sit weird, and it's going to yeah. sit with me the wrong way. Yeah. And so instead, kind of what I do is I just, like, okay, well, did we send an email? Can we get to take it down? No, we can't. Like, we've tried. Okay, cool. Yeah. I put my phone down. I figure out something to do for me because that weirded me out and now I got to feel a little better yeah feel a little refreshed so yeah I like do some skincare I like go <laughs> hang out with my friends something that will make me forget what I just saw yeah, yeah. you know yeah. you're very good at setting yeah, I was gonna say. at like we always talk about like things that are like in our control and things that are like out of our control and we spend a lot of time worrying about the things that are out of our control but you do such a good job yeah. Almost like innately. Thank you, mom. Yeah. Uh, doing these things and only focusing on the things that you can control, which is so impressive. And anyone, any age can definitely learn a lot from you and how sure. you, you approach life like that. Because, I mean, I freaking worry about everything and that probably yeah. two out of those hundred things are actually things that I can control. Yeah, we, spe we spend h half, if not more, of our lives, you know, fretting about is it fretting fretting <laughs> fret yeah that's a, that's yeah, yeah that's a word i've never heard yeah. it with the ing i ending. know it sound, I, it made sense in my mind before it don't, came you out said but then, don't fret. and then you added the i fretting i'll go with it huh. i'm fine with it okay worrying <laughs> fretting um about things that yeah are not that are outside our control and it's just um yeah, yeah it's it's difficult not to yeah but yeah I, i've been i find the it same so thing. easy yeah you're to. incredible yeah thank I you i need to learn something from you no it's like it just it mainly has to do with having really good friends okay hmm. because for me friends was really hard to just maintain to get to find good ones to like maintain that you know yeah um and yeah i actually just call this like one friend every single time you know, that something is like just not sitting right with me and I just need to like a laugh or like I need to forget something or I had like a argument that like, OK, that argument happened or like a misunderstanding happened. Yeah. Got to let go of it. You yeah. Know? And so I call my one friend, which I actually found out, you know, um, Teddy Purdy. What? Teddy. Teddy. Purdy. Like Teddy, you're Teddy. How? Teddy. Teddy is one of your close friends. One of my best friends. He's what? like my older brother. What? <laughs> How? Martial arts. Shut up. 
I saw he started doing that. Yeah. What? That is so crazy. <laughs> Can you explain to our Love and Drop listeners who Teddy is? Whew. Um, <laughs> te- Teddy was my assistant. <laughs> Teddy, um, yeah, I, I had, um, like, I had a dream assistant, George, who was with me for a while. Um, in I, my assistants, they become very close friends. And George, you know, became a very close friend of mine. And then George had an incredible opportunity come up. And now he's, like, freaking worked his way up at um, Showtime. Um, and, but when he left, I was like, you need to find me the next George. You can't just <laughs> yeah. leave Dip. me. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, I got you. And Teddy was, Teddy was a PA on a film I did called Run the Tide. He was just a PA. Oh, really? Yeah, and that's where George met Teddy. And then so when George was bouncing, he was like, it's Teddy. Teddy's the next me. And I was like, what? So then Teddy did Ridiculous Six with me. He did. Did he he do a cuckoo with you? He did cuckoo with me. Yeah, we did a couple projects together. Um, that's Teddy. That's so crazy. Yeah. But like, I've been keeping up with what he's been doing the last few years and like, he's, he's acting right yeah. in martial arts. Yeah. That's so cool. So yeah. you met him through martial arts. Yeah. Um, so after I came back from doing babysitter's club, I was like, I gotta get back into martial arts, you know? And so thing is he was actually, because of the way I started, I had to take a gap. And so I just kind of went in with a group that was where my level was. And okay. Teddy was in that group. Wow. And um, at that time, I didn't really have friends, really. Yeah. You know, um, especially after being, you know, gone for a couple of months. Yeah. You know, yeah. the ones that you had kind of fizzle away. And you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> Starting from the ground up again. And Teddy was there and he was just like laughing. And I was like, this is literally like my best friend. What? So he's become that person for you. Like, yeah. like I need to call somebody. And yeah. And he just like talks to me about anything. We could literally like have a five minute conversation just on saying goodbye. Like wow. saying oh bye gosh. and bye. Bye. Like just like I swear it's so stupid. But Aww. he knows how to make me laugh the Aww. hardest. And he is so funny and he's so intellectual. And like he is. I've gone through like also friends where like, you know, I hear someone say something behind my back and I'm like. Do I do like I don't know how to like I don't know how to feel like I just that's so awful and so when I have something like that happen I immediately text Teddy yeah because wow. he has such a clear mindset and I think that's also what has like helped me throughout these years especially through you know social media and all that is having someone like that who is so leveled you know mm-hmm. it's a battle it's like not a battle but it's like between my mom and him because they have such good examples for me you know yeah. wow um and yeah, he has helped me through so much of just like, you know, so gee, you can't control that. Yeah. You know, got to put your phone down, you know. And so I'm like, yeah, what am I doing? You're so right. Got to mm-hmm. snap me out of it. And he does a very good job of that. Um, but he was actually like at the very, the first Dancing with the Stars uh, episode and the last one. Oh, no He was there. Yeah. He's just like, he's. This is so funny and crazy to me. Wow. What a small world. Yeah, I know. We had like, he and I have like, yeah, he's basically like my big older brother so we we all what we've learned is we all need a teddy we all need a teddy teddy's the okay. best bro okay i need teddy in my life now <laughs> let's get teddy over here i need a teddy <laughs> i'm That's... sure me and him have some fun story well yeah i think it's like sometimes <laughs> i'm we talking will not tell on this podcast no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. sometimes he would talk to me about certain things because i'm going through something and he's like had to help you through something similar you know wow and so He'll kind of like help me get that I'm not the only one going through it, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh, thank you, Teddy. This is like a love episode for Teddy. All right. <laughs> Did not see that coming. The title, Teddy. Um, okay. It's time. It's time. It's time, finally. You are the winner of Dancing with the Stars. Yes. What 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 <laughs> season was this? Season 32. 32? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to be honest with you. I've never... I've never seen a full season. Yeah. This season and you uh, because we haven't even watched it since we've been like did you just stop watching it at some point? Cuz you used to watch it, but we've never watched it together. But then this yeah. season 
she started watching it probably halfway through and I would like peek in like I'd be yeah, in the living the room in. and I'm like it's the peek mm, in. and then I get like sucked in and I like watch a couple and then yeah. I'm like leave but the finale came and she's like we're watching this whole thing yeah. and I was like but this and this is on she's like I don't care <laughs> so I sat down and I fully watched my first full episode, episode. from start to end and I, that's all I knew yeah. what happened on the finale. Oh, wow. And I said to I said to Tay, like halfway through, this is, you know, no offense to anybody else. But I said, if she doesn't win, I'm never watching this show again. <laughs> <laughs> I was just very mad. He did. Like it was halfway through. Everybody had done their first dance. It was like. This is great for everyone. But if she doesn't win, I am never watching this with you ever again. So um, I'm glad to say I can continue watching Dance with the Stars now. Yeah. Um, so thanks for that. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> but congrats. Um, Thank you. Did you watch the show growing up? At yeah, all? I did actually. I watched it with my grandma a lot. Um, oh. Yeah, but like going into it, of course, knowing that I've watched it with my grandma a lot, you know that there's usually like a figure skater or like. Yeah a tennis Some player or like yeah. someone who like did roller skating their whole lives. I'm like, got you. So let me just set the bar down right here. And I was like, let's say you make it to week four, week five. Yeah. That would be great for you. And I'd be proud of you. Sochi. Yeah. Just said that to myself. And I got there and I was like week four, week five came around and I was like, we're still here. Maybe we might have a chance, you know, if we just keep going, keep coming up with great concepts, with great ideas, you know. And also just having a partner like Val, you know, I didn't want it to end. So yeah. I had a great motivation for it to continue, you know. Yeah. I feel like th they're all probably wonderful, but yeah. I just feel like he would be a great one, a great partner to have. Yeah. Well, especially at a time, you know, we were both kind of looking for something positive, you know, I think that. Val has become my daddy now, yeah. um, especially at that time. I didn't really have, you know, re relationships with my friends because I had to kind of focus on dance for three months straight. Yeah. Yeah. And I could always go to Val for a laugh. You know, I could always go to Val for like just a good time. And that was really important for me is just like, gr like rooting the whole thing in fun. Yeah. yeah. Because the second you take things just too seriously, I like could disappoint myself. I can like make myself overthink. And I'm like, that's not worth all of this. You know, I'm doing this for a show to dance. Yeah. That I don't really know how to dance at all. So just have fun. Yeah, you can't you say know? that anymore. <laughs> well, now I can't say that. <laughs> wow. um, so there's also something fun that you're doing on tour. Can yeah. Let our listeners know what that is. Yeah. So um, basically, I kind of came up with this idea just because. You know, on the show, there's a lot of behind the scenes. You know, a lot of people get to see what's going on and how it happens and, like, the process. And I, you guys know, planning. <laughs> I was like, where, where's video footage of, like, what this process is like? Like, I want to see behind the scenes of, like, what it is, you know? And I had no idea what I was getting into. So I was like, why not just make my own videos? So Val and I are going to post, like, every week that we're on the show, like two videos of just behind the scenes of being on tour, you know, what it's like, the process of rehearsing at a new venue every single night, you yeah. know, getting ready, seeing the fans, and also just like a few little moments of banter between Val and I and like yeah. Rome and seeing Jenna mm -hmm. and like, you know, all the dancers in their like relationship with one another because that's what this show is about. Yeah. yeah. You know? And so I feel like of course, we all get to see, you know, people get to come and see people dance, but also you miss out on a little bit of the little moments that we yeah. like so much about the show. So I great. hope that within my videos, I can That'll put be... that in there. That'll so they're going to be, be pretty so rough. Fun. They're not going to be very well edited because I'm oh. going to be on a bus. <laughs> they're going to be great. What a, what a cool no, That's going to be so fun. We'll leave, we'll leave a link to like your socials where you're posting it. And we'll also leave a link for tickets. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is Lemon7, and I'm going to start with the first question. Okay. What movie or song title best describes your mental health today? Movie I think or song? Just going into rehearsal later today, I'm going to say I Feel Like Dancing by Jason Mraz. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Very fitting. 
very fitting. Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. How is okay. he? Is he fun? Yeah, he's quirky and funny and silly. He seems really fun. Just yeah. from my limited, my 12 minutes of watching him on TV. Your probably... 12 minutes of watching him. No, he's funny. He's silly. I love him. Like, I truly do. Like, I wish, like, he was like the cool guy on, like, yeah. on the show. I was like, I'm like, if I could make him laugh today, that'd be great. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so good. Um, number two is how open are you with people in your life when you're struggling? Pretty open. I just straight up call him, like Teddy. <laughs> straight up call him. Teddy. I'll be like, a bit uh, lost today. So just yeah, a whatever. little giggle would be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's, mm. We all could use more of that, or I sure could. <laughs> um, anyways, number three. <laughs> talk about something therapy after. session. <laughs> I'm like start crying. <laughs> so gee, help me. Um, anyways, um, number three. If you could, ooh, this is a new question. I love this one though. If you could only follow three social media accounts, whatever ooh. platforms, but only three accounts, what would they be? Oh, I know. These are good. I thought of this one. I added it. <laughs> I know. He's proud of himself. Um, I am. <laughs> Probably Teddy, just because wow. like you gotta. He takes everyone's spot because you're just okay. Well, just because like he posts really funny reviews on his stories. I have seen his. Have reviews. you seen his like movie reviews? Yes, and he puts all the all different, of them like yeah, different yeah, here, yeah. all the different emotions. <laughs> They're so great. I've wondered <laughs> sometimes how long did it take you to create that. Like I've seen you have no idea how some of like our running jokes last so long just because we're so like like devoted to just <laughs> making the joke. I'll, I wouldn't I would not even I'll see a story that he puts up and I'm like, for you to have just made that, that probably took at least an, an hour. hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. funny. So for exactly that, Kay. uh Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> um ooh, now we're getting into slim pickings here. Right. I don't know if I follow my friends or like if I follow like a funny account. I know. What's like the best TikTok account? Best TikTok account? I mean, what like makes you laugh the most? Um, usually my friends. Okay. So probably. So we're looking at probably your three top friends. Oh, bro, this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start some fights. Back in the MySpace days. You, you Stop, to, not MySpace. To, what is MySpace? <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. Um, yeah, you had to like rank your friends. It was rough. Yeah. Oof, that's rough. Yeah, you had you had like your top 10. It was, it, it would start fights. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that to you right now with your three accounts. Well, I'll go with my three accounts here right oh, now. Okay. Um. So Teddy. Okay. And then, of course gotta hype my girls i think they'd have to take up my two spots um because i i fill the rest with my like really good friends but they're like guys and that gets weird so <laughs> so i'm gonna go with mckenna grace and momo i love her we i love, love mckenna. mckenna so momo much Tamata. my little momo i love momo <laughs> oh my gosh okay we'll we did babysitters club together okay so we have that like okay. i've been friends with her for a very long time one of those that like lasts a while you Aww. know yeah so that's so sweet those are my three. Those are good ones. Yeah. Those are good. Okay. Because then, like, whenever they post something, I can like write a funny comment. <laughs> well, I follow. I follow two of your three. So I follow one of the three. Yeah, I don't follow oh, yeah. Teddy. We need to get you Teddy's you, you, account. You, you, I know. I need to follow Teddy. Teddy. Yeah. Teddy was before me. Okay. What are we? Number four. What is your favorite form of self care? Ooh, my friends. I love going I love on that. hikes with my friends. I love, like, that used to be my thing before Dancing with the Stars. Like, I can't now just because like I'm, I'm going on tour and like I was very t devoted to my time at Dancing with the Stars but I used to go on hikes like every week wow. where mm. I'd bring all my friends like I'd invite like I'd send an invite to like maybe 20 of my friends and sometimes they can't make it you know sometimes yeah. they come up or whatever so sometimes it'd be like a hike of like 15 of us wow. or, like 10 of us like going up on up to the Griffith Observatory oh mm. my gosh that's great she's a hiking girl <laughs> It's like a 10 minute hike, guys. I would be so honest. It's like, <laughs> I can do that one. I was going to say, I will not go on a hike. But. No, it's just like a kind of steep hill that kind of winds around. Okay. To I, could, I could do it. It's, it's about the conversation. Yes. It's the group. It's that, and know. I bring like a little boom speaker. And oh. Like I play music. Oh, and yeah. 
I bring my dog. Prepared. Yeah. Okay, well, now I'm going. So. <laughs> dog There's a dog? Up. Sign us up. Wait, yeah. what kind of dog do you have? I have a cattle dog mix. Oh, That's also like another form of like self-care. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like pets. So like thing is, um, I had to move out of my old house because their neighbors were being weird. So I had to leave my dog with my dad. And we, my mom and I just like went to this small little area. And just for like the time of like Dancing with the Stars, and like the show, yeah. the movie coming out. Um, and there's like this stray cat, this like neighborhood stray cat. And I've like, she sleeps with me. Yeah, she like sleeps with me. <laughs> I don't feed her. I don't like, I don't feed her at all. Like, so she has no reason to hang out with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I give her like a lot of love. She sleeps in my bed. She like has a little spot on, in the like, living room where I put like a little towel down and she like sits on it. <laughs> oh my God. And she like sits in my PR boxes. <laughs> Have you named her? Yeah, Talipo. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, I don't know why. No, it was originally going to be people ever. It was originally going to be Petunia because I thought it was a girl, Petunia. and then but then I thought it was a boy because the front neighbors like took her to the vet and said it was a boy. Oh, and so I was like, oh, geez, gotta figure out another flower, I guess. <laughs> And so I put Tulipo, and then I was like, wait, well, it was going to be Tulip. And then I was like, wait, we need more, like, just Spanish stuff in this house. So I put an O with an accent on top. <laughs> Tulipo. Yeah, so that's the name, Tulipo. <laughs> Gotta bring the Latin in. <laughs> of course. Holy crap. Okay, that's great. But I think it's a girl, so now it's just Tulipo. Too okay. scared to go back to Petunia. <laughs> it, okay. Yeah, it, it feels like it could work. Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if we ever convince you to come back on this podcast, um, can you p- please bring Tulipo? I, she'd sit like right there. Yeah. Oh my she's, gosh, the cute, yeah. she's the cutest. She's the cute. Bring a PR box, put it right there. <laughs> no, I <laughs> swear she like and then I They was, love boxes, man. They do. I didn't realize, but I like was looking for her. I was like, Talipo, Talipo. I was like, man, this cat is just like not around here, I guess. And then I like looked at a box and I was like, Oh, hi. <laughs> she's like minding her own business in the box. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. I did not think we were gonna get to Talipo from <laughs> the self-care question. Anyways, number five. <laughs> What would you say is the most misunderstood thing about you? Ooh, that I'm older than I am. People yeah. think that I'm like 20, 25. Yeah, I, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, I'm 17. I know. Girls had told <laughs> me that you were 17. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. That's... I don't know why people think I'm older. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, to me, I feel like I act and look exactly like. <laughs> Maybe because you're tall. Guys, Maybe? I'm seven. What? I'm like five seven. That's not even like T- tall. That's taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything's tall for no, you. I, know. <laughs> so I, I didn't like even think five, that that five, was very tall. Like, oh. <laughs> I thought you were tall when I saw you the other night, especially in heels too. Yeah, in heels, I'm like, I'm like probably five nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good heel. I mean, you also you carry yourself very. Yeah, I think that's what it is. You have I a very mature way of carrying yourself yeah which i is, guess you're not like running around i don't like know to me i'm like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i also be making dumb decisions like why did i have like five slices of pizza i don't know but i did <laughs> whoops <laughs> yeah it's like why did i choose to eat the chocolate over the nuts that my mom decided that i should have i'm like i don't know <laughs> but i did <laughs> why did i like stay up till like 4 a.m watching a netflix show I don't know. I did. <laughs> hey, <laughs> life is all about balance. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. That's very true. Um, number six, who has had the most positive impact on your mental health? Ooh, I think it would be Teddy. Yeah. Um, And then when it wasn't Teddy, it was Val for sure. Mm. Yeah. That's so sweet. The two, the two big older brothers. Yeah, literally. I, I think that's what I've like needed my whole life. It's just like this kind of big older brother kind of energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love that. Okay, last question. It's a tough one. If you could go back to one moment in your life, what moment would that be, and what would you say to yourself? Like as like a word of encouragement, or like could be literally e- anything yeah. you want. Most mm. people don't change anything. If there was a moment you wanted to change, you go right ahead. But no, it could be any moment for whatever reason. What moment would you go back to? If it could be to experience it again um, mm. or yeah, a lot of people do like just like keep going. So chi. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, I feel like that for me, it would be like times when 
you know, my mom said I should do something and I said that it wasn't a good idea, you know, um, like the martial arts, you know, I, I went anyways, but like yeah. probably having a better attitude. Um, mainly when I was younger, I felt like I kind of was like, no, I don't need to do that. Uh, I don't need to do this. And I still do that a little bit, but I feel like I try my hardest to have a different perspective on things and be like, I should at least give it a shot. You know, I can't, yeah. I can't say anything bad about it unless I've tried it, you know? Um, so I definitely say for martial arts, I would have, I would have told myself, you know, shut up girl. <laughs> this is really fire and cool. And you're like waving a sword around and you're like <laughs> knowing what you're doing. You look pretty badass, So <laughs> have a better attitude about it. <laughs> oh, it. Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. Well, this has been a really fun way to kick off this sure second has. season. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming. This is so fun. And no, I'm thank you for having me. This is a lot of fun. I like, I like having these kind of conversations. <laughs> They're fun. So fun. Every once in a while, you know, having a serious <laughs> combo is good. <laughs> Can't wait to watch you dance too. I know. I know. Go check her out on tour. Woo. Sweet. Sweet. Anything else? You that was good? Okay. Yeah. That was so cute. Oh that my was gosh. Fun. You have me dying. <laughs> <It's gonna be laughs> <fun. laughs> no, you want to see? Uh, yes. Absolutely. Like we said, what a ball of fun energy and stories is she. And what a way to kick off season two. Not too shabby. Episode one, season two. Thank you so much, Sochi, for coming on. Yes. I know I truly couldn't think of a better guest to start the season off. Yeah, she was great within her but oh, yeah. great. so much so much knowledge and wisdom at 17 years old yeah it's crazy yeah and thanks for reminding me i'm practically 10 years a older decade older I nine know. years and I'm terrifying with that. Uh, but we have we just have some really fun episodes this season for you guys that we're super excited about a great one next week a great one next week one next week that you have been requesting for a while yeah so i think you'll be pretty happy and then, and then the following week, and then the following week is really good. And, and then the following week, oh, and then, and then the following. The so you might as well click that. the follow button, hit yeah. the subscribe button, follow us along on this journey so that you guys do not miss out. As always, you can email us at lautner.thesqueezepodcast at gmail.com. Any questions, comments, concerns, guest ideas, tea time with take questions. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram at the squeeze and on TikTok at the squeeze podcast. We post all of our stuff there. We post some fun like questions on Instagram as well. But I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your Wednesday and rest of your week. And we will see you right back here. See you right back here next, next week. week. Same time. Move. Squeeze out. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation.